This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's up guys? So we're working on this little row of cooler doors. We've got a little problem today. I went ahead and scouted this out. What we've got is a system we haven't worked on, so it's kind of new to us, I believe, as far as having to work on it lately. The initial problem was the customer had these, this uh, particular evaporator freeze up. So what she did was turned off the fans, which these are both together in parallel, and the system continued to run. They left it off for a week, and here's what happened. So to say the least, it got worse than what it was originally. So what I've done is gone up on the roof, Flipped off, uh, pumped the system down uh, by putting it into a defrost and then shut the power off to it. We got one fan out here. We've got, I believe, another fan here that looked like it wasn't, one of these didn't look like they were spinning right. They might be working now, but we're completely froze up inside here. We've got milk, which is their biggest concern right now because they just got a delivery. But we're gonna get this milk moved into another cooler. Well, they have two other coolers over here that were turned off. And so I'm up on the roof and I look at this cooler here and it's turned on, pushing straighter ports and there's no refrigerant. So this cooler is not going to run and we've got other problems to fry before we would even consider screwing with that and they haven't been using it anyway. So we have a freezer. So I flipped on the freezer and the freezer runs. So what we end up doing is going in and flipping the thermostat up to 35 degrees, moving the defrost clock down to 20 minutes because it's a heated defrost, and that's going to be good enough to get them by to hold their milk. And it was holding at 35, even with the door open, it hit to 40. So we're going to be fine there for now while we're working to get that going. That's the start of what I'm running into. I couldn't find the key. Luckily, a little piece of duct tape really kills that siren, and we got that wedged. What we're going to do is we're going to try to break off some of this ice from the bottom because I really don't want it all melting all over the floor. As you can see, it's already starting to melt pretty quick. I'm going to grab a trash can, dump it into the trash can, see if we can knock that loose, and then, then we'll melt the rest of the water. And we went ahead and knocked some of the ice off. Knocked some of the ice off there. you got to be careful, though, because you don't want to puncture anything or create more problems got more to get off of there yet but I'm trying to get that done as quick as possible because it's making a mess they never put floor drains anywhere near here which is makes it more difficult we could have put a tarp on this but I usually don't run into this that often I am going to figure out a way to make sure these stupid switches are gone there's no reason they should have had these unfortunately these should have been wired with a solenoid that if you're going to shut down the fans you need to shut the solenoid off and then you shut down the refrigeration system there's no reason to have these on a cooler anyway. I see it sometimes on a freezer, but even then you need to wire it on so it kills the solenoid at the same time. That way the system can pump down and then the system shuts down, things get warm and you go like, oh man, something's not working. Instead of just letting it run, 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 run. Melting it away slowly here. We've got most of it knocked off the bottom. Oops, got most of it knocked off the bottom. Once we get the back done, we'll go ahead and get the inside done. I got the fans shut back off. As soon as I can get it to release from the coil, I'm just gonna snap it loose. Um, and then that way, because I'm not trying to melt it completely, if I can bump it a little bit and make it pop out, great. Otherwise, you can spend all day here. What I've been doing is kind of throttling it and shooting mainly at an angle so it doesn't go too far into the coil. That way, most of it hits the outside. I've already gotten one piece to snap off literally just bumping it and it doesn't hurt the coil as long as you're going in flat all together then it, throwing it in the trash but yeah we got the back about completely done and then we got a little bit in the front to do at the bottom there we'll get that here in a moment i noticed this fan here slowest to shut off so we're gonna replace that one and i already got one that's completely dead down there we'll get that one got the back all done everything's fine Kind of rinsing off some of the coil because you can see a little bit of dirt there. 
not horrible, but definitely got a little bit there. I don't think that was enough to slow down airflow to create what we got going on here. I think we got defrost issues. It was set for like, I think 30 minutes total. And if they're trying to make this into a beer cave type style thing, that's not gonna be long enough. Uh, usually we gotta go somewhere between 45 and 60 minutes of timed off defrost, but meaning it just doesn't run the compressor section. We got that, we're gonna pull a couple of these fan uh, shrouds and get in behind there. Okay, and you gotta make sure that there's nothing in between in the coils themselves because it will hide there and you'll think you got it and you don't. We well, definitely got some ice out of there. The Klein flip bit here works out perfect for making that quicker. And it's magnetic, so it kind of holds it right there for you. All right, so we were able to get the last bit of it. If I can sneak behind here and not get it on the motor, I get it in here this way. If I need to really watch out for the motor, I'll go ahead and yank it out. But literally was able to pull that out without bending it, speeding it up. Now, what I did notice here while I was working on that was when I seen this one shut off before, it it there you can see that it, it's it's sometimes catching and stopping this one here just an easy turn look how long it goes just an easy turn this one here easy turn this one stops that one there's still going and this one here stuck so we're gonna get these ones replaced I'm gonna check this coil here Probably spray it off just to be safe. All right, broken loose with some pliers there. Get these out of here. While I'm in here, I'm gonna look around and see if there's any wires that are getting close to shorten into anything. These were pretty well wire tied, so they wouldn't. This was wire tied to this wire right here. The nice big nuts here probably won't fit the new motor, so we'll probably have to use the small ones that come with the uh, motor replacement motor. A nice little stand there for us. Okay, got it out. Little Fasco motor. Looks like it's 115 volt. 20 horsepower. You can see the oil that had leaked out of it. It does not want to turn. So it's definitely got some issues there. It's more like regular keys like this with the extension. That way I can just break them loose. I mean, it just seems like it's easier. There we go. There we go. And this one here would not spin at all. Sometimes you can just get on there with your linesman's, break those loose like that, and take off the rest of the way by fingers. And since they've just gotten deliveries, it works out great for a little table. What we use is the Rescue 9662s. Pretty much about the same motor. It's reversible rotation. We carry a 230 volt version of it. And like I said, the capacitor might need switched to the front. It's hard to say. If I do, I can just undo it from there and move it to the front. It does come with both plugs. I think it takes that wider one, so I'll tape that together so it won't fall out and rotation we'll just see what it is when we get in there all right what i end up doing is just trimming off the nubs on the back side i got plenty of room back here okay i went ahead and taped that together so it doesn't pull apart gotta leave that adapter on there because it's a wider plug and then i'll put a wire tie on that so that it can't unplug itself and strap that down to these other wires I'll flip it on real quick see what my rotation is see if it's going the wrong way going counterclockwise. They had a do not turn off the fan thing there, so I'm gonna make stickers. And that way I don't have to unwire it. And then they will at least know, because they didn't know any different. So there we go. Switch those two wires back here. We should be good to go there. Okay, I was able to wire tie it there and that won't pull out from there. Got that reversed. And now I'll just put a blade on.
So we got them all together. Let's kick them on. Make sure all the fans are going the right direction and they're running. They're all blowing. <coughs> All right, good. They're all blowing, we're good to go. I went ahead and washed the grills, washed, 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 whatever. Cleaned that up. Those ones there are gonna need a little bit yet. Those are all got cleaned up because I take them all apart. And uh, so we should be ready to adjust our defrost and check operation, see if our side glass is full. I'm not sure exactly why this froze up originally other than just one fan motor, which I find that kind of hard to believe, however, um, we're gonna check the thermostat there, which who knows what that's set at. Like it's set for 35 degrees, which is perfect. It'll give us enough for a traditional off cycle defrost naturally, and then the defrost clock will do the rest. Let's go ahead and go upstairs and see what we got going on up there. They had high pressure uh, port uh, on there for some reason. And uh, let's just see how this thing's feed and see if there's maybe a TXV issue, something like that, who knows. I went ahead and repositioned the bulb over back behind here so that way it'll have the air coming through and that would be more accurate than setting dead in the middle uh, i usually like to see it either up in this corner on the back corner close to it bulb pointing down with the refrigerant line coming into the top and i or go horizontal which is what i did there yeah i'm on the conduit which normally would not be a good idea but all this conduit is inside here it keeps it away from the wall and that's not an outside wall anyhow so let's go up on the roof. All right, so here's the condenser. Like I said, we put it into defrost to pump down, we all the refrigerants up here, and then uh, shut it off. I didn't want to forget the defrost. I already taken them up to 45 minutes a piece, kicking it on, pressure switch kicked in. It should be about ready to release and roll. 11.45, let's set that up. It goes in defrost when I do it. It's a little sticky. You could have a defrost clock going bad. Which, I think I'm gonna replace it. I gotta check the contactor yet. You can see a lot of the arcing marks there. Not really happy with a lot of this stuff got wires that look like the coating. I think it's just the outside coating that are starting to crack. Wire nuts there that's been punched instead of squeezed and the insulation on those is cracking. Side glass is staying full so far. Hopefully we don't have to mess with that because like I said this is not the refrigerant we use. So that's what we're starting with. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a defrost. That way we can go ahead and start checking some of these electrical connections. Like look inside here at the contactor a little closer. All right, it shut off. Kill power. Get in there and look at this. Points a little better. They definitely are a little pitted. You know, we'll check our capacitor here too while we're at it, since it's just kind of hanging around. Great factory wiring with the wire tie. All right, I thought this capacitor felt a little warm. We isolated one leg. 5.9, I don't need to do the math, that's, that's weak. So I get that changed. Got a new clock ready to go, got a new contactor, and new capacitor. The new capacitor here, gonna make sure it's all right. Comes in at 7.7. .7. Got the new contactor mounted up. They had some jumpers there. I went ahead and snipped off the ends and just connected two under one. Uh, speed terminal there on that and all we gotta do now is just change the uh, clock which should be a pretty easy swap out just get uh, that popped into place got the wire nuts there that were looking a little ratty got them taped up checked all this wiring it's just that plastic clear coat that's cracking the main insulator is fine everything in here looks to be good and it's all tight and tidy we're gonna go ahead and kick her back on. I've got the clock set up for three 45 minute defrost, off cycle defrost. Green's on, good. Got the new contactor, got the capacitor mounted there. Used a heavier wire tie than that uh, traditional one. It's a pretty heavy one. It should last at least a couple years. 
but we're gonna go ahead and let this drop in temp, see where our side glass is at. Fan cycle control looks like it might be a little out of whack, but I really don't want to try to adjust that today. Uh, but for the most part, we've got most of all our bases covered. We had, like I said, that clock here that is, it does not want to turn. I mean, it, you can see the jump there. I mean, it's like I'm trying really hard to turn it. It's, that thing's junk. Logical solution here is the defrost clock was sticking. Sometimes it probably would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Uh, then when they turned the power off, and, uh, that just compounded the problem. We're gonna put it in defrost just to make sure it times out and shuts down with this new clock. Nothing worse than finding out tonight over time that it's not running correctly. All right, good deal. Set up for the clock's time. You can see how easy this turns. Look at that, just one finger. Not better. So it'll go into a defrost here around one. So we got about an hour or something before it needs to drop down. I almost wouldn't mind it skipping that. You know what, I've actually hit four of them here by accident. Let's switch that to three, there we go. Normally two is all we need, but in this case here, because they're running the beer and they may uh, decide to try to go colder, we need to try to get as much as we can. This is not a heated defrost, like I said, it's just timed off. So all you're doing is using the room temperature to fall out that coil, that's why you can't go below 32 and even at 33 i mean you're just not enough heat there to really melt the coil anytime soon it's just the longer you're gonna have to go the colder you're running it so it's pulling pretty good on that i mean could we spend time here cleaning coils and all that stuff well normally uh we do a lot of pm stuff for these people but i've never been to this store so i don't know if they're gonna have us do a pm on this one or not but for right now it appears it's all right unless i dig in there a little further and find dirt trapped in there it's probably gonna be let go so far we're still staying solid here we ain't at box temp yet and it's not cold out but one of the things where you know it may need more but i can't stay here all day we've been here for a while as it is uh coil and stuff took a while I'm gonna go down here and watch to see how the box temp's dropping so far everything looks like it's uh should be good to go Got to make sure there's no other hidden problems. Went through, noticed I was off by a little bit. My addition was a little off. So like I said, every eight hours, we'll be got it set for 45 minutes. I'm gonna jump it up an hour. It's not gonna hurt nothing. We're gonna fall, well, I don't know if we're gonna do fall back in the fall or not with the time. Not that voted that out, not sure. Anyhow, whatever. Um, I don't want this thing going into a 45 minute off cycle here in less than 45 minutes. This thing needs to run nonstop, get that box down to temp. All right, so hopefully that sticker there, which they had writing on that one, but they did not have it on this one down here. So we've got it on both. It still leaves it so we can uh, do our work and kill the fans simple. Uh, that way, you know, they've been told. If they do something that causes that, then it's their own problem. So recap, we've done thermostat, moved the bulb over to here, replaced bad fan motor here, bad fan motor over there, replaced contactor up on the roof, defrost clock on the roof, and weak capacitor on the roof. Condenser coil could be used as probably a wash-in, wouldn't hurt nothing, but I think we're gonna try to get that on a PM. If not, the whole store looks like it needs a PM. I think it's a new store they acquired. So currently right now, let's start to drop a temp. All right, so we had a little bit of ice left over from before. Feels like it's feeding pretty good. There's super high humidity in here because of all the water on the floor. Uh, we got warm coming in. Getting cold as it goes through, which is normal. Feels cold here. Looks like they're all feeding, so we're probably fine there. Don't know if it'd be worthwhile to check it over with the uh, super heat or not. So we looked at that one's distributor tube, and now we're looking at this one here. It seems to be feeding about the same way. You know, it wouldn't surprise me feels warm that they probably just dumped that art 22 substitute crap in there and didn't recheck their superheat it was originally r22 so you know you gotta ask yourself why they have to change it we have a leak is it a continuous leaker you know it's one of the things where i don't have a whole lot of information and i don't think anybody here really knows much about what's going on either i'm gonna just let it go for right now mention it on the paperwork that we may need to stop back and check that and that way i'm not spending more time here than what i need to the thermos thermometer here doesn't look like that works very well. I don't know if it's broke off or what. Yep, it's broke off, so it's bad. That's that's not very useful. 
Let's go look at that freezer that I used for a cooler while I was temporarily working on this and we can shut that thing down. They can move the milk back in there. Looks like the walk-in freezer's right here. Let's see if that's the one. Yep, it turned off. It's holding pretty good at temperature. They were just inside here. So yeah, just one of them things. So that's, there's that. I wanna ask them if they wanna use it as a cooler or whatever, which is fine. The thing beside it is a cooler, but it, um, it would give them extra room for, for cooler, but I don't know if they really need it or not. I'm gonna let them decide on that. They wanna use that freezer for a freezer. So we're gonna go over there and turn that back up. I wanted to check the sight glass one more time. And we're starting to get some bubbles. That's not good. So that's what I was afraid of. It's probably other issues, probably has a leak. It just, everything just piles on. This is what happens when you let everything just go and you don't maintain it. So this is the freeze. We're gonna put this back to the 35 minute, uh, 35, almost 40 minute uh, defrost. That way we've got it back to normal and uh, they can turn it down at the thermostat. Right now they still got that milk in there. This just has a regular old traditional clock, which honestly I like better. They work better, they last longer. They don't care about dust and dirt and all that. So set up about 37 minutes area there. It's got a termination on it. Everything in there looks rough. That's on, we'll mark it on the outside so we know it's freezer. Cause it's a little hard to decipher it there with the way that's all mangoided. All right, so it went solid again. I'm gonna just tell them that we probably need to do a leak search possibly on it. I'm gonna see if we have any history on this thing. I mean, for the most part, I mean, I've been here for quite a, quite a while getting everything done. I don't wanna spend a lot of time then they question the bill. The system seems to be working pretty good right now. Those TXVs could be adjusted. I can't really set super heat right now with the box not being a temperature. It always changes once it gets to temp. At this point, I'm gonna wrap this thing up and then we just come back if we need to come back. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, check me out on Instagram, and until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.